All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. Today I want to share with you some engine specs on our Dyno 440 here that I'm building for a friend of mine to go in his 69 Charger RTSE Rotisserie Restored beautiful show car. But before it goes in the car, I've got to build it and we're going to stick it on the Dyno. So that's exciting stuff. You'll see our Trick Flow 240 is bolted on from the other side. I have looked down here. I actually have a YouTube short up of this just to kind of check, see what the bore's like uh, versus the valve placement. And it is easier to do this with the crank out, but I had already had the crank in before I got the heads. So there's a little bit of overhang there of the valve itself. I mean, of the cylinder head itself on the opposite side of the bore and just a little bit on that side so there's really this is a street engine we're not going for uh, it's being built for longevity and there's not a lot I can do about this currently but it's so slight that I don't think it actually matters chambers look good down there but that was something I wanted to kind of show in the video. What about the deck height? I promised y'all that. Mark there, we are at TDC for number one. A lot of people that don't actually realize when that dot is on top, that is top dead center for number one. It doesn't actually matter in what we're doing right now because I'm just showing you how high the piston is in the bore. Stainless steel staples ruler. If you can look through there, there's just a tad bit of daylight. Let me slide her from that way. There we go. On here. It's just barely sliding through, like right there. That's literally holding the um, feeler gauge. So that's nice and tight. We can also check it up here and check down here and then average those two. But I like to kind of go as close to the center as possible. And this ruler can't really give it any uh, flex downward. So that is five thousandths, which is really nice because that helps us calculate our compression next. That's probably what you're here for. Here's our cam card again, in case you missed the cam installation video. There's a core number. If you want to use it in your build, you can buy yourself an Urson cam. It's really nice. Hydraulic roller. So, our bore and our stroke, we are 40 over, 3.75 stroke. We've got a 78cc chamber. We are at 10.63 static compression ratio. Uh, Joe was out here. We got it figured up. And, of course, use a calculator online. But we also figured up the dynamic compression ratio, which is kind of what you need to know for your whether or not you're going to be pump gas friendly. And they wanted that number there, uh, 49. The intake closes at 50 thousandths. So... I enter all that into the calculator and that gives us the extra friendly recommended. You can run safely on pump gas 8.1 max for engines with cast iron cylinder heads and 8.5 with aluminum cylinder heads. Guess what? We are 8.5 to 1 with a 10.66 to 1 compression ratio. And that's using the uh, Cometic 40 thousandths gasket. And... I'm trying to remember, I think that's our bore size there, the 4.38. So everything looks great with that. I have the piston rings gapped. Here's our top ring. It says first ring. I like how they make it dummy proof and show you there. And I've got our second rings gapped. I can go ahead and get the piston stuck in today. But talking about the specs, a lot of people want to know that. For our top ring. I have gapped these at 21 thousandths, which is, uh, I think, two more than the minimum, 
two or three. They four thousandths per inch of bore. So I added just a slight hair to that. You can see street towing is four and a half thousandths. I mean, it's, you're really kind of splitting hairs and I would rather them be a little looser than a little tighter. So we're 21 on the top and uh, 25 on our second ring. So they're all filed up and ready to go. There's our Icon piston again. And these are uh, press pin. You could actually press them or float them. And we elected to have them pressed because these are reconditioned stock rods that were fully balanced and reconditioned with ARP bolts. So I think they look pretty nice. They have symmetrical uh, valve reliefs. So that makes it easy to go in either one. But Ed has them labeled for me. And also they were super cleaned up and nice and ready to go in. So I don't have to clean anything here, but I will thoroughly lube the uh, pen itself with my Lucas and oil 50-50 mix. So it'll be nice and sticky in there and uh, be lubricated when it comes up, comes startup time. So uh, I checked actually one rod so far with my dial bore. So imagine there's a bearing in there right now. I uh, dropped it in. It was two and a half thousandths. Really, really nice. Uh, so we're set up there. So I think it's about that time. Like with any engine build, the best way I was advised, lock the door and silence your phone. You'll end up with a better job. There we have all our pistons in finally. All torqued up. Torqued to 50 foot pounds on our ARP bolts. And I wanted to show you my rod side clearance right now. This is a 16 thousandths feeler gauge. And that is at the top of the uh, limit. Which, if you buy yourself some aftermarket rods, we are there. If I can get it on that side. They float over real nicely if you float them. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom. Get closer. It'll relax and move, real, move over on its own. Eventually. Anyway. Yeah. Like. Nice and tight. They were all there. So I feel good about that. Flip it over and I can show you what it looks like. Top side. Here she is. I'm really pleased with it so far. Um, I did go ahead and lay my straight edge on the back side and front side. Double check, we're still about five and a half thousandths below deck. So that's really nice. It's all looking good. I actually started uh, checking my cam button. That'll be another video. So anyway. Thank y'all for watching and I'll catch you next time.